All right, we're going live now. Hello, everybody. I think we're live. <laughs> I have you on my computer over here. I have you on my my iPad over here. And my phone's off. Okay, good. No sound. I don't need sound. <laughs> this might be in the way of me seeing things, though. Is everything working okay? Can you hear me? Can you see everything okay? Just gotta do the stream admin before we get started. I mean, as in making sure things are working. <laughs> oh, wait, where did the chat go? Oh, okay. I couldn't see you for a second. Hello, everybody. Oh, wow, okay. Lily, Gil, Simone, Art Lounge, Miss Barnabas, Fasquatch, Wolfie's here in chat, Tammy, Zargot, Masid, Catherine, Elaine, Afri, Sue, Vivian, Maggie, Claudia. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Janet. It's a bit weird because whenever I start a stream, I have everything up on my laptop. Wait, is it buffering or are we okay? Uh, everything. I'll just wait a second. Hopefully that wasn't a glitch. My computer was showing that the stream wasn't working, <laughs> but yeah, I have this, the chat and everything like set up on my computer. Is it working Wolfie? Yeah. Okay. Weird. Uh, but I also have it on my laptop. So I see the chat moving on there and then I see the chat moving on my iPad. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. So many people. Hello. Well, if you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm painting today. I'm painting with gouache. I'm going to be doing a little gouache study session. It's more just a chance for all of us to hang out and chat about what's happening in our lives and geek out about gouache and art and whatever. <laughs> it's a casual stream. It's not like a tut uh, official tutorial or anything. It's more just for us to hang out and study together. So if you're into gouache, you can study with me or you can do watercolor, just sketch, pencil sketching, whatever. Um, I'm going to be doing some little coastal studies because if you didn't see my most recent video, I was, we were just uh, on the coast and I got so incredibly inspired. Here, let me move the mic a little closer because sometimes I mumble. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get, I got so inspired and today I went back to a different beach and saw the same like long shadows across the sand, which I just love the colors in November. The light is really warm. It's like a orangey peachy light and all the shadows are like a cooler bluish purple. It's magical. <laughs> so I, I have those colors in my head and I have all of those, those things in my head that I want to paint. So I figured I would just do, uh, this is one of them that I did in that video or yeah, the other day. And then this was just a pencil sketch. And then I did these gouache or these rocks and the other stuff was since then. So the other day I was doing errands and I saw all this amazing light in the forest. So I was driving down the road and I just had to stop. So I, this is like when I do my color notes, um, I try to paint quick, but then I, tr I try to make a note of whatever colors I use. I don't always label the colors, which is a bad idea. Like if you're doing this, it's really recommended to label them. <laughs> so you remember what you used. Um, it's helpful. Anyway, I just did a couple like little studies. And then today I did a quick one. I only had a few minutes to do that because I was there like filming and scouting around uh, and taking lots of photos and suddenly remembered I have to stream today. <laughs> and I was gonna stay there all day till like sunset and paint. So I had to like change my mind and get, get out. But, oh, and then this was the other day at 
a place called Loch Garten, which is a gorgeous loch in the Cairngorms, near the Cairngorm Mountains. And I went with my plein air painting group. So we go, we meet up once a month at different places in Scotland. And this was a kind of a spontaneous meetup. But anyway, we hung out there for a few hours. It was really beautiful, perfectly mirrored, still water. Like uh, that was really fun to practice painting because usually there's just lots of movement on the water. It's always windy here <laughs> and it changes everything like it. Um, I did a couple of gouache and then I, this is gouache, but I used it like watercolor in this piece because I just wanted to practice that, like, or, or kind of play with that flowiness, um, like down here. And yeah, it was just a beautiful day. You guys, this lately, the, in, in October and November, I go into inspiration overdrive. <laughs> I'm just every day or as much as I can, I go out and I film and I photograph things and I try to sketch as well and paint, but it's like constant, just I'm being flooded by so much beauty that I can't handle it, which I'm not complaining, obviously that's amazing, but it makes it really hard to, uh, take all that inspiration and do something with it. Like I get overwhelmed and then I have f decision fatigue about what I want to paint and I just get like nothing done. <laughs> so that's why lately I've just been making random videos and, and taking you with me because I don't know, I'm not painting anything except little things like these. And I want to do a bigger piece like this. Maybe next week I'll be ready, but I'll do like lots of little studies like this and, and hone in on different aspects of it and then paint bigger. Uh, I just, but this time of year, I'm so scattered. I'm so, I feel so chaotic. It's, it's so, there's so much to see and it all changes so fast that I want to go out and take advantage of it. Like, I don't want to just, I don't want to let it pass me by. So every single time it's not like pouring rain, I'm like, I got to go out and film things and take photos. Uh, well, you're, what? Oh yeah. There, there are some places I could probably do like a little, maybe like an, an Instagram live. Sh I don't, I've never done that though. <laughs> maybe a YouTube live stream, but I don't know how good the internet has to be for a YouTube stream. Um, but I would love to take you all out with me and paint live from some of these places. Signal. It's so weird in Scotland. Like you'll be in the middle of nowhere and you'll have 4g and then you go to a town or in between, like near a town and it's nothing. <laughs> it's like, what? That especially happens to me on Sky. So it's so unpredictable. Um, one time we were climbing a mountain on the West Coast and we both had like 5G at the top of the mountain and Wolfie even video chatted his dad. <laughs> it's just like, what? So maybe I could do that. I just, the main thing is figuring out battery. Like my battery drains so fast on my phone when I'm using video. So I'd have to have like two spare portable batteries maybe, but that would be really fun if we could find a place that's sort of like a reliable connection. Also, I know I've been rambling like crazy since I started the stream and I've missed a lot in chat, <laughs> but I also want you guys to chat with each other and just hang out with each other while we're streaming. And also Wolfie's in chat if you have any questions. Um, I'm just trying to scroll up. If I missed a question, a specific question, you could always ask again and tag me or tag Wolfie. My, my bigger piece of this. Yeah, I'll definitely want to, I want to do that in gouache. I sometimes do both. Like I'll do a big piece. Like I do a lot of studies outside and then I come back to the studio on a rainy day and I do a bigger watercolor as well as a gouache, sometimes multiple of both to kind of the thing is, it's like every time I paint something, I'm like, okay, I learned something. I can do it so much better. And then I do it again. And then I do it again and again and again. And it's like, it never ends. Um, and when I jump back and forth a lot between watercolor and gouache, it's, uh, I mean, like I, I lose a bit of my, my watercolor abilities and then I lose a bit of my gouache abilities. And it's like, I can't just stick with one thing. I've I just can't. <laughs> so it takes me a while.
to get to a point where I'm happy with a piece where I'm like, okay, I could frame that or okay, I could give that to someone as a gift. Um, yeah, live outdoor stream. It would be cool. It would be really cool. I, the thing that bothers me the most about streaming is the unpredictability of internet quality. When I used to stream on Twitch all the time, towards the end of my streaming days, my internet was going berserk. And some days I would have like no upload speed and my streams would be jumpy and laggy. And it just made the quality go down so much that it, it bothered me like you would not believe because I don't want everything to be pixelated and glitchy and awful. So I was like, well, I might as well just not stream. <laughs> and then I can, if I make a video, I can control everything and I can make it really high quality and like, you know, control it all. And streams are unpredictable and you just never know what's going to happen. My out here where we are in the highlands, it's okay. Some, most of the time, but other times we just have like barely any internet speed. I wish we had fiber internet. <laughs> that would be the dream. The dream would be living somewhere in the middle of nowhere with fiber internet. <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, the other thing I wanted to mention during today's stream is there's only a few days left to do the gouache tutorial boxes, the monthly gouache tutorial boxes that I keep mentioning. It's the one where, you know, you get a box in the mail, you get all of the supplies you need. So all this gouache eventually will be yours if you sign up. <laughs> Lots of gouache and all these brushes. So lots of brush shapes, to play with as well as a tutorial each month. It's like a very specific tutorial, I'll walk you through step by step. It's definitely going to be geared towards beginners for gouache, just be, you know, in case anyone has never used it before, I want to make sure everyone's covered. But whenever I do a tutorial, I also talk about like how you could improve it or what you could do to like take it to the next step. So that'll be part of it as well for anyone who's already kind of familiar with gouache. So yeah, it's going to be fun. And that those pre-orders close on Wednesday, so the, the 15th this month. And then everything gets produced and shipped out. Hopefully everything ships December, January, and we start the new year fresh with an exciting gouache project together. I'm really, really excited. And then um, like I'll be uh, I, and I also want to thank everybody who has already signed up. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who's also on my Patreon and supporting me. I really appreciate that. And thanks for everyone who's just here to hang out. Okay, let's do something while I talk. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll sit here and talk forever. Whoever, is, is anyone here that used to be in my Twitch streams? Because you know that once I get talking, it's hard to stop. They would trick me sometimes. They would... I'd be like, okay, guys, I'm getting tired. I need to like go, I'm going to wrap the stream up. And then someone would ask me a question or mention something. Oh, wait, the stream stopped. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they would be like, hey, what was that thing you were mentioning about going to the West Coast? Or they would just mention something that I knew they that I would want to talk about. And then I would talk for another half an hour and I would be like, wait, I can't, I need to stop streaming. <laughs> Those wily chatters, they knew. Um, oh, let's see. Some are the same and some are the new brushes. Yeah, so the brushes in the gouache boxes, it will contain the initial set of seven all mixed out, mixed up throughout the months. And then uh, you'll also, so in total, there's 24 brushes if you sign up for the 12 months. So you get two brushes every month different ones and I choose them based on what the tutorial is going to be about um, or like what, yeah, what we're doing in the tutorial. I give you the brush you need for it and talk about how to use it. And yeah, it's, it's part of it. So at the end you end up with, so in my last video, I think one of my last videos, I, it's called brush shapes and how I use them. I talk about every type of brush that's going to be in the boxes. So you can go watch that if you want to get a little more insight. Um, these are all the gouache colors you're going that are in the boxes. So all of the Shinhan gouache. 
I need to pick out what colors I'm going to use today, actually. So, oh, these were the color mixes that I did. Uh, I'm thinking, let's see. Burnt umbers. Oh, burnt sienna is really fun for beaches. You can never have enough paint. <laughs> I mean, the main thing is using your paint. The good thing about having a lot of paint is that you're not afraid to use it because, you know, some people get in this mindset and I did it when I very first started. I only had a little bit of a few tubes of watercolor or gouache and I'd be like nervous to use it because I didn't want to waste it because I knew I was going to mess up. And it's like once I invested in a bit more gouache or more watercolor, I kind of lost that fear. And I was just like, yeah, paint as much as you want every day. Mess up as much as you want. Like learn from your mistakes it's just a very freeing mindset, which is why I love affordable gouache, you know, or watercolor, whatever. If you can buy like a good amount of it and then not worry, it changes the game. Mm, all right. I think I, I hope I didn't miss any questions. What sketchbook is this? I actually haven't decided which sketchbook I'm going to use today. I just grabbed a few. This one is my, this one is all what I, when I take outside with me, cause it's very portable and lightweight and I can like bend it. Um, so I probably won't use that today cause I like to save. These are discontinued at least here and I can't get my hands on anymore. So I'm putting these aside for only using outside. This one is my, uh, Etcher signature series, which is also limited, but I could technically buy more or make uh, or get one of the other Etcher ones, which are kind of similar. It just has really thick paper. And I love that, that sturdiness. <laughs> like it does not buckle at all when you paint on it with a lot of water, but it is very, very textured. So that's a whole other thing. Like I sometimes don't like using textured paper with gouache because it can kind of interfere with the brush strokes, but it can also give you gorgeous, make dry brush textures really easy to do. It's like kind of give and take. Um, and then I also have my beige sketchbook, which you guys see all the time. I have used this in tons of my streams and for like a lot of my videos. <laughs> um, yeah, here's the end of it. I did that in a video, I think, these ones. And then that was when I did that really, that video about rough weather painting. This was what I painted. So I could fill the rest of this page in with a little study. Let's do that. And then maybe I'll switch to white paper. I like bouncing between white paper and beige paper. I usually use I like using beige paper outside because if it's sunny and the sun is hitting my paper, beige paper doesn't blind me. Or if I'm using a white sketchbook, it's like really harsh. It, b the sun bounces off the paper and it's like, uh, I just find myself squinting more. And, and then if you paint in shadow versus light, it changes your values a lot. It's just like a whole thing. So I usually prefer to paint with beige paper. Um, if I'm going somewhere really bright and sunny, like a beach. Also, I really love how gouache pops out on this paper. I think that's probably one of my favorite things. Um, like, oops. What? Oh, um, <laughs> so Wolfie is helping me so much. He's asking, if I miss a question, he's telling it to me from the other room. <laughs> so thank you, Wolfie. Uh, someone asked what my favorite brush is from the new set, from the new collection of brushes. And I would have to say, look, I broke one of my brushes. I'm so sad. <laughs> it's okay. I have plenty of spares, but um, I think the filberts are really fun because they're really long and soft, just like the flat brushes, but they, they're a little juicier. Like they hold a little bit more water and I can get different types of brush strokes. Like because, because the tips are rounded, if you like press in, oops, 
if you press down into the paper vertical like this, you get like the perfect rounded shape that you can use for treetops or canopies or leaves. Like it's a very organic shape, a natural shape. You can use it for like, you know, the tops of mossy mounds in the forest. So I've, I've been having a lot of fun with these filberts, but I also really, really like the giant mop brush because it holds like I've been using this a lot when I do my initial layer on um, watercolor paper getting a lot of like softness and a lot of water and pigment it just lets you spread it so fast and, and you can get that that flowiness <laughs> really easily with it whereas with a flat brush you're kind of you can do it with the bigger one but it's harder because you are pressing the the hairs are shorter than these and not as full so naturally you're like kind of um, pressing into the gouache or the watercolor more and it moves it in a different way than this one which is like much softer and flowier so yeah I guess that's oh and I also really love this one because it's a bigger size of a rigger brush so it's really really oops long and soft but it's thicker than my other one so it holds way more pigment and um, water which means I can get way more brush strokes out of it without refilling it so if I'm like doing a ton of grasses or like quick marks like this I can fill in a huge amount of a huge area without r constantly dipping it where I have to like my other one I have to dip it a lot <laughs> so Gouache and acrylic paint are cousins. <laughs> acrylic is permanent. Gouache is not permanent. Although you can get acrylic gouache and then that is permanent. Um, but uh, what I love about gouache is that you can blend into it like forever. And you, some people call gouache opaque watercolor, which it basically is. Um, I like to think of it as its own thing because it is very unique. <laughs> I think of gouache more like liquid pastels because it is so insanely vibrant I mean look at the the vibrancy on these like it is so 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 packed with pigment that the and everyone who's used gouache who mix who's done like color mixing and stuff you know that it only takes the tiniest tiniest amount on the edge of your brush to mix a new color like you it just blends and it mixes differently than watercolor even I think differently than acrylic because acrylic has like a bigger body to it. So like thicker, almost like a gel. I don't know. It's not quite a gel, but yeah, you know what I mean? It, it just behaves differently and it, and gouache dries, I think a lot faster so you can quickly layer things, but because you can just perpetually blend into it, it has some aspects of like oil painting, which is a whole other beast. <laughs> it's like a really oil painting to me is so hard um because you but but that's a different thing because it doesn't really dry like water like gouache does but you can get that beautiful blending that you can't get with any other medium gouache kind of has a little bit of that but it's very different it it behaves differently <laughs> and you can water it down you can use it kind of like watercolor okay let's let's paint Oh, no, I haven't tried. I have not tried black paper. I don't think. No, not that I can recall. Oh, yeah. Someone messaged me about the discontinued Strathmore sketchbooks and I still have not responded. I will. I get caught, I get um, overwhelmed with messages, uh, but it's starred in my inbox. So I will, ma I will respond. And the thing I worry about with getting those Strathmore sketchbooks shipped from America is the uh, price and shipping and import costs. I don't think it will be that much, but it sometimes depending on the packages, <laughs> let's see. Ooh, I haven't used yellow ochre. I'm going to use white Naples yellow, 
ultramarine, which, and maybe cobalt turquoise. Yeah, this is my Stillman and Burn beige sketchbook. Nova is the name. Ooh, I haven't used Prussian blue in a while. Where's my blues? Let's use a blue that I haven't used. Actually, I don't think I've ever used. No, I did use a cerulean blue gouache years ago when I got Holbein gouache. So it's been a long time. So let's use that. Because what I want to do over the next couple months is like get very, very, very intimately familiar with each color. I am, I'm already familiar with a lot of them, but there's some that I haven't used much. And I want to like, you know, make sure... I'm I'm good to go for mm, blending wash um, blending wash I do talk about well when you say blending wash what do you mean do you mean creating a soft gradient for the background or I mean, because gouache naturally blends into whatever it touches. So if you have a layer down, it'll already naturally blend into that layer when you put something on top of it. Like it just is so, it's, it's so blendy, <laughs> blendable, which I love. Do I want lemon yellow in this? Um, but do I have a tutorial about that specifically? I don't. I don't know. I think it's just because it's a natural part of the painting process that I may mention it a lot as I'm painting in the, t in the normal tutorials, but I'm not sure if I like yeah, so soft, gradient. soft gradient as in portraits. So getting, okay. So like blending from one color softly into the next color. I do talk about that. Like if I'm painting a sky, that's something that happens a lot. So, um, like I'll say, okay, start with this color and then quickly blend back and forth down into this color and you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think I've ever done a full tutorial about just that, which is a good idea. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll do that. Burn Sienna. Do I want that or no, I can, I'll use, this will be my red. I guess I don't really, I'll just start with those. We'll just start with this. This is like a little more earthy maybe cause I'm going to mix more burnt umber and Naples yellow into things. We'll see. I can always add more. Like if I want a bright green, I will maybe need a brighter yellow. Cause this, this I could maybe mix with cobalt, which could give me a nice green, but we'll see. How many? All right, we're a half an hour into the stream and I'm just starting to paint almost. Oh, wait, quickly before I start painting. I wanted to show you my portable, the, the painter that I'm, the palette that I'm using for painting outside. I refilled it. So these are all the colors that are in that, in the palette. It's all the Shinhan gouache and I am shocked by how long this paint is staying moist and not just hardening up. It's, it's sh yeah, shocking. <laughs> um, it's maybe also cause I'm using it every day, but I let it sit for like a week before I started using it. Uh, this is a portable painter classics palette. So you see this in a lot of my videos, but this is what it tends to look like after a week or two of painting nonstop. <laughs> so all the colors get mixed up and messy, but the pigments are so strong that like you still can get really good color. These are what I need to clean off. I need to clean those pretty much every time I paint. Otherwise things get muddy kind of quick. I usually keep one or two of these and then I'll mix into it for like grays and stuff. But yeah, just wanted to show you that because a lot of people were asking. And these are some of the colors you'll get in the boxes. You get all of the colors that I, all the Shinhan gouache that I have. All of, all of these colors you get if you do the 12 months. 
do, 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 do. oops um 20 or it's like 30 tubes of paint by the end or something like that but if if you've never used Shinhan, I'm excited for you because it's quickly becoming one of my favorites. It's definitely growing on me more and more. And also because it's affordable, like I just, at least where I live, it's very affordable. And I, you know, don't feel bad when I'm like using a ton of it to practice, which you shouldn't. I know that is a totally a mindset thing. And it's, it's hard to get over when you're first starting. But gouache... Do, gouache goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. I think watercolor does as well. Um, this is my watercolor version. So I have a few of these, but the this is, I recently refilled this with my newer selection of Daniel Smith. I haven't used it yet because I'm still waiting for it to dry a little bit more. I don't like to worry about these in my backpack. <laughs> like when I throw this in my backpack and it ends up upside down, I don't want to worry about it spilling. So I actually did pour gouache into the skinny side over here, but this is all watercolor. And I am very excited. This is, these are the colors that I use for watercolor, which you have seen probably in some of my videos. The only new thing is maybe phthalo turquoise. Not sure. But yeah, anyway, distracted. Oh yeah, I could have just showed you that. These are the colors that are in it. <laughs> it's a nice selection for painting outside because there's a lot of natural colors that I can just quickly use, especially when I'm doing lots of coastal scenes. Is anyone else painting or sketching or working today while they watch. I always like hearing about that. If, if so, let me know what you're working on. All right. Oh, and a lot of people ask about this palette. This is what I don't like about YouTube. What I don't like about being a YouTuber <laughs> is how many people ask about products or, or supplies. But the thing is, I totally get it because when I watch videos, I'm like, Ooh, what's that? I want to know what that is. <laughs> but it's just like, I can put the description of it and a direct link to it in my description of the video. I can put it anywhere, but I will always get so many questions about what it is. <laughs> and that is really hard to either ignore or keep up with like both. Like it just, I, I get overwhelmed by those, by that. I try to answer people. I try to make it easy. Like I always try to put like a link to my supplies in the description, but it's, it never fails. It is always a thing. I think it's this, it's the same with like photographer YouTubers. They get annoyed by how many people are like, they don't, people don't comment on the, what the person did in the video or how the photos they made. All they ask is what camera is that? What lens is that? <laughs> it's like, okay, I get it. Like it's, you know, you're showing off what you're using, but it's still one of those things where you're like, after doing it for so long, you kind of just want to have conversations with people, but that's not what most people want, I guess. Keep a Google sheet and update it if you get new stuff. I actually did start doing that <laughs> with my pencils and pens because I changed those so often. I had like a, I think I put it in my, my supply list page even. I was like, okay, new. I've added a Google spreadsheet for everything I use because it was just changing so much. I mean, by now I pretty much know what papers I love, what brushes I love, what 
gouache I love, but I've also, I also like trying new gouache when I get my hands on it. Like there's a bunch of brands in the US that I want to try. A lot of people ask me if I'm going to try certain brands and I'm like, yeah, I'd love to if I could afford it or some things I can't even get in the UK. So yeah, though gouache or paint will change now and then. Oh, sorry. Back to what this palette is. It's the Gorilla Painter um, mixing tray, six by eight, I think. And it has a little lid, which is, sorry, I think I just like yelled into the mic. <laughs> it has a lid. Tell me if I'm yelling. I sometimes get over, get carried away. Uh, yeah, you can close it and it, it's pretty airtight. It's not a completely 100%, but oh, like maybe if you're really watery in here and you put this on and then tip it in your bag, it might leak out. But I've never really had issues with it. And I originally bought this for oil painting like way back in the day and I took it out with me a few times, but then I forgot about it for years. And then I recently found it again. And it's just a very convenient size when I'm doing like quick study sessions. Um, I'll pour gouache into here, use it for a session, close it with a lid, and then I can use it the next day, sometimes three days, sometimes four days if I keep getting it wet. But if I want my paint to stay wet for like a week, if I'm doing a lot of sessions or a bigger painting that's taking a while, then I will use my red grass stay wet palette, which is just the most amazing palette. I love that thing. That one is a lot more expensive, but it's bigger and it has a sponge in it and it has special palette paper and it keeps the gouache wet for like, well, probably forever. But then if you let it sit too long, it might get moldy. <laughs> but yeah, it's similar to the Masters, Masterson Stay Wet palette, I believe it's called. Masters or Masterson. You all know what I mean. A lot of acrylic painters use those and basically anything that works for acrylic will work for gouache. Ooh, that one's a little bit gooey. I'll mix it a little bit with my palette knife. I swear cobalt turquoise is one of those colors that no matter what brand I try, I have not issues, but like it, it's gooey or it just, my Windsor & Newton Cobalt Turquoise Light, which is probably my favorite version of it, is so gooey. It like never dries, which is what I don't like about it. But I love everything else about it. Okay. You're crocheting. Ooh, nice taking out your gouache and finishing a sunset scene. Ooh, dog is sitting on your lap. That's that, yeah, that takes priority. Dogs and cats priority. <laughs> you did, you're working on a sketch you started a year ago or no, you did a sketch a year ago. I've done that too. I've taken photos and done sketches from years ago and suddenly like down the road, I'm like, why didn't I ever turn that into a painting? And then I get inspired again to do it. Excuse me. You visited Belgium and things are more affordable than Mexico. Really? Is binder a big binder separation a big issue with gouache as it can be with watercolor? Yeah, it definitely happens with both. It from I have tried dozen I've tried like I don't know, 13, 14, 15 brands of gouache now. And every single brand has at least one color that has binder separation. I can't remember which of those colors are off the top of my head. I'm sure I mentioned it in the review posts I've done on my blog, if it happened. Um, but like, I think certain colors do tend to separate more, like maybe the cobalt turquoise is one that I've noticed a few times in different brands. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Sometimes an earthy tone, an earthy color, because those kind of like con the pigments like congeal <laughs> and then you have to like mix it up with the binder to make sure it's all smooth again. Oh, Christiane, thank you for that. That's very sweet of you. But yeah, you will get a little bit of separation now and then 
but it's easy enough. Like whenever it happens to me, if it's, if I'm pouring it onto a palette or a mixing tray, I just use a palette knife and, and mix it up really thoroughly so that I don't see the separation anymore. Or if my tube, if my tube is like already opened, maybe like a half used or three quarters used, I'll get a toothpick and s s open the cap obviously and stick that inside and swirl it around and mix it as best as I can before I squeeze it out because that's more ideal. That means more of the pigments mixing with all the binder and you can usually get it to be pretty good after that. Oh, someone's painting Elon Don and cool working on it since July. Is it a, is it a big detailed painting of it? I mean, castles and architecture in general, that's intense. <laughs> I took my friends to Elon Dunnan Castle uh, a couple months ago when they visited and it was so stunning because it was foggy in the distance and oh man, it was just the perfect setting. Uh, okay. I'm going to do, oh my God, <laughs> Wolfie just grabbed this. Speaking of Elon Dunn and Castle, a million years ago, I did like, I wouldn't call it cross stitching because it's not, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you would call this, but it's thread art. And I was really into it for a long time, but this is a version of Elon Dunn and Castle. And I just never knew what to do with it. So it just hangs up in our bedroom. <laughs> I think I've painted it as well at some point. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe it, embroidery. Would you call it embroidery? I'm not sure. Embroidery. Maybe it is. It's very thick and there's a lot of like layers of, of thread in there. Um, but it was more like freehanding it. You know, you're not following a pattern. You're just like throwing thread around. <laughs> the back of it is crazy messy. Okay. I think I'll do a little, I'll give myself some room for like color mixing on the side. Um, this will be like my warm up, so I can do get coastal colors back in my mind and I'm using a reference that I took that same day we were at the beach I'll use it a little was that Floki no. oh I got all excited <laughs> embroider with a similar style calls it thread painting Ooh, I like that thread painting yes I'll call it that from now on <laughs> I was just calling it fiber art, but that's very vague as well. Hmm, maybe I'll do, a, well, this is definitely going to be a simplified version, but it's okay. Wow. I am the worst at drawing straight boxes. Someone the other day asked me if I use a template to like m whenever I do these little squares or shapes in my sketchbook, they thought I used a template of some kind and like traced it, but it is always freehand and it is always crooked. <laughs> so if you like that kind of thing, just go for it. Don't worry about making it straight and perfect. Actually, it's probably better if you don't, because then if you draw a perfect square, and then you end up painting outside of it, it'll probably bug you and you'll just like, you'll be annoyed at yourself for getting it all messy. So avoid getting into a perfection mindset. And I already have gouache all over me. I have a lot of rock painting tutorials. I have an entire Skillshare class about painting and drawing rocks. So that's like, a crash course in how to simplify rock shapes, 
draw them in a simple way and then kind of build up the detail or build up the shapes and then how to paint it in watercolor and gouache and even digital, I think. I used to do digital painting way back in the day. Um, and then I've had, I've done rocks in other tutorials as well. Uh, yes, my reference is, bear with me because of my, you're going to see yourself in chat. <laughs> Chatception. Can you see that? That's my reference. It's like a view from up above on the cliffs looking down into the water. perfection mindset is the perfect avoiding it is the perfect advice for you oh man yeah I am I've never I don't think I've ever been perfectionist but if I draw a perfect shape like if I get a ruler out and draw it I mean I could always use tape but when I'm out painting outside and I'm just like changing things a lot I don't bother with tape and so I get into this habit when I'm in the studio as well <laughs> I mean these ones have I taped it off and I painted the background and then I painted, I took the tape off and painted this on top of it. So that's another fun way to do it. Um, but yeah, if I try to draw a perfect thing with a ruler and get, go overboard, where is all this burnt umber coming from? <laughs> like I am covered. What? Sake. Why is it like the, uh, the brown color that's all over me? Why can't it be a pretty color? <laughs> like purple or lime, like turquoise. Awkward. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's fine. I'll probably just end up like rubbing it all over my face as well. Then I'm going to see Wolfie later and he'll be like, um, oh, what's going on? <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to do a, we'll start with a bigger brush. It's either brown or it's phthalo green that gets all over you and phthalo green stains like crazy and then it never get, goes away <laughs> well yeah so back to the perfectionist mindset thing it is very dangerous to get into that mindset um because it also makes you afraid of making mistakes and mistakes are your biggest teacher and I don't even like calling them mistakes but technically they are because you're like not you know you do something and you don't mean to do it but you learn from it and it is so valuable like every single time I paint I make a mistake or at least a million mistakes and I learn from them all so like it's something you should try to embrace and like look forward to if you are on the path of learning that is like I know it does suck when you do a big painting and all of a sudden you, you know, do something wrong on it and it ruins the whole thing and you have to start over. That does suck. Okay. I mean, you're going to still learn from it, but it's never fun. Let's see. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. A little better get the lighting phthalo green is forever green <laughs> yeah i forgot what i was saying it probably doesn't matter um so the other thing that i'm practicing lately is loose well i'm I, ever since i first started painting i've been wa i've wanted to be able to have a be a very loose painterly style but in a way where i'm controlling it so it might you might look at a painting and think holy crap 
that looks like you did it so fast and easy, but then it really was like a slower process and you, and I controlled everything. So that is really difficult because my tendency is to want to over render things and try to lean towards less loose or, or like not perfect brushstrokes, but I want there to be visible brushstrokes in the final painting. I love that. I've always loved that. It's, I, I mean, I, I love abstract art when it comes down to it. It's probably my favorite type of art, but I want my paintings to be kind of a bridge between abstraction and realism and like very, I don't even know what I would call it. It's like impressionist, but it's lean, you know, it's sometimes more real and st it is just stylized. It's like a very specific look in my head that I want to be able to create. Uh, so... I'm trying to train myself to be able to create those brush strokes and in a controlled way, in a way that I meant to do it. Sometimes you get lucky and you're like, wow, I just painted the perfect sky <laughs> with the perfect brush strokes. And how do I recreate that? Um, but yeah, it's a very long process to learn that. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a year, at least not for me. It's, I've been painting since 2015, 16, and I'm still learning it. Someone who does it really, really, really well. Well, there are a lot of artists who do it really well, but... Uh, contemporary artists that I follow that are post online a lot. One is Mike Hernandez, who does a lot of oil painting and gouache painting, but he like his brushstrokes are visible. And even he like mixes two colors in one brushstroke, but doesn't over blend it. Uh, and Nathan Fawkes. These are the two artists that I look up to a lot with their, their style, their um, looseness but their mastery of color and light, like, you know, you can tell they've been painting for decades because they just get it. <laughs> they go outside and paint something and it blows my mind. Um, oh, actually another artist, Hester Berry. I love her work because it's way more abstract. It's still re like, it looks like a thing a lot, but it, sometimes it takes you a second. You're like, what? Oh, okay. It's like light pouring through a forest, but her brushstrokes are very stylized, very loose. And yet it, yet her, her use of color and light is so magical <laughs> to me. So anyway, I'm trying to remind myself that I've only been painting for, what, five, six years? Or wait, how many years? <laughs> what year is it right now? Is it? Why did I just think it was 2028? What? I don't know. <laughs> Wolfie is like, I've never been good with what with years and, and all that, but that was that was stretching it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I've been painting since 2015, 16, and that's not that much time when I think about it. But in my head, I'm like, I should be way further along than I am now because I paint a lot. But there's, it's, it's that should. It's like what Lindsay was saying the other day, the frugal crafter, if you guys watch her channel, which I love, her sat chat, she's said, don't should all over yourself. <laughs> And I loved it because it's like, gosh, I do that so much. I should, 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 should be able to do this. I should do that. And it's like, stop. Anyway, sorry. Let me try to catch up with the chat. <laughs> Can you see your palette while you mix? Oh, it's not exciting yet, but sure. Um, yeah, I can zoom out, I guess, and show that. Uh, don't know. A link in chat would be it. Her chat chats are hilarious, inspiring. I love them. I put, like, usually I, I go a while without watching art YouTube channels. 
and then I have like four weeks of like a whole month of videos to catch up on and I just put all of hers on in a row and it's like you know a couple hours of just ch chatting and hanging out not that I'm chatting I mean I do sometimes talk back to her on the screen <laughs> but I love that it just feels so cozy and, and I really enjoy them yeah I think is this showing yeah when I'm doing the first layers a lot of times I'm well at the moment I am distracted because I'm chatting but uh usually I paint the whole thing in before I go detailed I I get very distracted when I stream <laughs> so yeah anyway I'll I'll try to paint how I usually paint well I'm only using this side of the palette here's the other thing usually usually when I paint I only use this part to mix and I just keep mixing into the same area and like use the existing mixes and colors so that I don't oh I don't uh, end up with any like pure color because I don't want any one of these individual colors to be in my painting. I want them to be blended at least a little bit before I touch the painting. Otherwise it's like too much. <laughs> it's too powerful. It's too saturated. Uh, and it's definitely, yeah, it can get out of hand. The colors can get out of hand quick. So I like to start a little slower lay down lots of like muted tones maybe well no it's like I still go colorful <laughs> I don't squirrel <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh man um <laughs> when do you decide or how do you decide what to use white or tanned paper Ooh! it's fine nothing to see here just squash falling on the ground uh, you, well, if I'm outside, I already talked about my, if it's a sunny day, I prefer to use toned or beige paper because it doesn't reflect light into my face as much. If I'm using, if I'm in the studio, I just go back and forth all the time because I love toned paper. With gouache, it's great because you're, you're obviously using opaque paint. You're painting your highlights, unlike with watercolor where you have to preserve the highlights from the beginning where the paper is your highlight. With gouache, you're painting your highlights and your darks. So starting with a mid-tone like this, the beige paper as your mid-tone, it lets you see how bright your highlights are right away. And that's something I really like. You've seen 90% of Lindsay's videos. Wow, that's a lot. She has a lot of videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I love her channel. She does so such a wonderful variety of things. And she's so talented. I mean, skilled, I should say. She's so skilled. Uh, and very inspiring. And even if I'm not into what she's using or like a product review that she's doing, I still love watching them because I just like her personality. <laughs> she's, you know, that kind of extroverted, chatty, fun personality. And man, it takes a lot to be able to, to put out that many videos as well as be that energetic. <laughs> like she just has so much energy. It's inspiring. There we go. Oh, hey, Julia. Thank you. Yeah, gouache is a lot of fun. It's one of those mediums that I feel like a lot of people either love it or hate it. <laughs> it just maybe because when I first started painting, I was doing acrylic and I, I dove into oil pretty soon, like that opaque type paint. I was 
from the beginning, I was really uh, gouache, gouache and I just clicked. I don't know. It, it's, it was the perfect medi in between paint medium between acrylic and oil and watercolor. Um, I've always loved all of the different mediums. Like I don't think I could ever just choose one. My water is off the screen because it can't fit in the screen, <laughs> but I'm not using that much water. Uh, my paper towels here. So you'll see a little bit of that. I'm not using a lot of water right now. Sometimes I do a really loose wash for some reason at the moment I'm painting from the top down, which I do sometimes like it's, it's not that I never do this. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do this funny thing when I stream where I kind of forget how I usually do things because I'm distracted by chat and me myself talking. <laughs> so the fun thing with for me about streaming is when I'm done streaming, I'm like, how did I paint that? When did that happen? So yeah, I learned something when I stream about myself, about my subconscious painter, <laughs> my subconscious abilities. <laughs> uh, at the moment, I'm playing with layering different warm, neutral tones and grays. That's like my goal. I want to keep this background layer nice and soft. And there was so much beautiful, warm light. It turns everything more golden, more pinky, and the shadows feel more purple. It's just November is gorgeous. Uh, so I just cleaned my brush off and now I'm patting it down. Usually though, the reason I'm cleaning my brush off is because I'll do a few colors. I'll do a few brush strokes and paint dries in the hairs really fast and it kind of feels clogged up and it doesn't spread as softly and evenly as I want it to. So I'm like, okay, I call it refreshing the brush. I just dip it in the water, clean it off on the paper towel and then start again. So I might even go back into the same exact color I was just using, but it'll let my paint flow smoothly, flow easier. I have video evidence. <laughs> yeah, I can like watch my own streams and learn from myself. The funny thing is, I don't know if I just have the worst memory in the world, but I look back at videos from a year or two years ago and I'm like, who, what? How did I do that? Who was that? Who was I? I, I feel like every year I evolve so much that I I just forget what I, what, what my mindset was like at that time. Or I like doing, I used to do a lot more vlogs, but I like doing vlogs because I would express where my head is at, at that time. And like a year later, I would go back and watch that vlog and be like, oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about. And I could like see the progression as of myself as an artist and how my mind kind of evolved over time and how I think about painting or art that's very valuable. Like if you've ever wanted to try making videos, that alone could be a good reason for you just to making videos forces you to kind of uh, express your mind, express your thoughts in a different way than any, any other thing that I've ever done, even chatting with people. Um, and then you can go back and it's almost like a visual diary as well. So Whenever people ask me, like, is, is YouTube worth it? All that extra work is, and I always say, yes, you should at least try it. If you're curious, you should just try it and see, because you never know. You might absolutely love it or absolutely hate it. <laughs> you never know. My brush is extremely dry at the moment, a little too dry. Water. 
Here, I'll do the water because then I won't be so distracted by the, all this brown. I think I need the water to be there before I can do this because then I kind of know where my values and my, my color is going. Cerulean is like a nice subtle blue. It doesn't go super dark. It's probably too um too blue. Let's mix some gray into it. Oh my gosh. I can never paint a straight horizon line. <laughs> Uh, I remember back in the day when I was making my fearless brush blog, I was debating for so long whether I should call it the crooked horizon because I always paint my horizons crooked or draw my horizons crooked. It was definitely, it was between those two, but I'm, I'm glad I went with the fearless brush because that feels more like me my what the mindset I try to have regularly is just be fearless just go for it try it and see what happens like that's how you're gonna learn yeah even if like I'm pretty I'm extremely introverted actually <laughs> and even when you're introverted or maybe more so when you're introverted Video is a very freeing medium because no one else is there when you're making the video. People see it if you share it, but like you're in control of everything. It's not like you're going to a, a meeting or a group with a lot of people and then have to express yourself. Like you are doing it in your own bubble of the video. So it is a really amazing way to get to know yourself actually. Uh, sorry, just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Watching you mix colors, make it look as easy as breathing and it speaks to the hours you've been painting. That's what happens. Yes, the more you do it, the more you know. <laughs> That's so obvious. I mean, the, the more natural it feels. Like, you know, it's all about just reacting to what's happening in the moment. Like, oh, that color's too light. Oh, that color's too dark. Okay, touch a little dark, get it in there. Like constantly just making these tiny adjustments um it and you don't always get it perfect a lot of times you just have to keep going and keep layering you know it just it's amazing how much you learn in every single painting if you really like pay attention to what you're doing Um, the brushes, the, the first set of seven gouache brushes are always available as their own set, but the rest of the brushes that I've been talking about lately are only available in the monthly boxes for now. Wait, the impermanence of gouache. Sometimes it annoys me to see oligarchs using art to store, hide the money they hoard. Is that crazy? Wait, what? I, I missed something. <laughs> Can you explain that a little more? Ha, to store or hide the money they hoard? Um, sorry, just making sure I didn't miss any questions. Perhaps an additional camera insert set on the water station and below the camera. Oh, like a little separate. I mean, I could try to move it over a little, but th yeah, you can't really see my, my water tub. If you can see that, maybe that'll give you an idea of how often I touch it. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> like I, I can only show so much. <laughs> We're getting excuse me, we're getting crowded in here. But now I have to move over. Am I gonna be <laughs> in the screen still? If it's interesting, I'm happy to show it. I just figured that it wouldn't be. <laughs> 
All right, what am I doing? Painting. See, my gouache is now dry. All these thin mixes on the palette are now dry. So if I get, if my brush is damp, I can just quickly reactivate it and pick some of it up and use it. But it's usually too thin. So I have to like add other. Oh, that's too yellow. A lot of times like I'll mix a color and I'm like, oh, that's way too yellow. I can already tell it's too much yellow or too much whatever. And I'm like, hmm, I can probably use it somewhere in the painting. So I'll just like get it off my brush <laughs> on the painting. <laughs> Visit me and watch me paint in real life. There is something amazing about watching someone paint in real life. Like when I went to the workshop with Ian Stewart, that was my biggest goal and, and takeaway was watching him like a hawk <laughs> from over his shoulder, being able to see every hesitation, every, um, or not hesitation, but like thought, you know, he would be, you could see him thinking as he painted. And that is amazing. And, and how much he dips his brush and how much he dabs it on the paper towels and blah, blah, blah. It is extremely, extremely valuable. So I get it. And that's, I also just thought it was so, even as an introvert, 100% uh, uh, recommend going to a live painting demo or painting workshop if you can with an artist that you really like because, oh my gosh, you just learn so much. And also it is so inspiring and it's really nice to be around other people who are super interested in that thing. Like if I did a workshop, it would be, did my stream just stop? No. Sorry. Um, if I did a workshop, it would be probably focused on gouache, but painting outside for sure. And like being able to see someone do what they love. And if you love gouache, you're going to, we're all going to be geeking together about gouache. <laughs> and that's, I could talk for about gouache for days. And we do want to do live workshops. That's in our plans. We are currently researching places we could do it um, because we would need a backup indoor venue. Um, it's too unpredictable in Scotland. Like it just, if we didn't have a backup venue, it would rain all week. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> so we are looking at a lot of places, a lot of options and we'll see. We'll, we'll get something going. If you want to be informed when that happens in the future, sign up to my newsletter. Uh, there's a, if you go to my website, I have a link to my new, there's like a newsletter tab, a newsletter thing in the menu. I forgot I was going to use this area over here for my little test swatches. That is something that is very helpful. Uh, like sometimes when you mix colors, you know right away it's the right color and the right value. But then a lot of times it's like just not quite right. You know, you have to play a little, keep adjusting so you can do a little test and see. It's interesting now that I've been painting with the cerulean for a little bit, I've noticed it's kind of easier to create grade down colors. Like I really like, I'm liking it for that reason, because it's a thing I'm trying to do in my work is be able to harness the power of gray. And it is hard for someone like me who is obsessed with color. And just because I'm obsessed with color doesn't mean I want all my paintings to be colorful all the time. Like I want to be able to yeah, just harness the power of gray in the work and not just constantly make everything oversaturated.
Oh, thank you, Dee Dee. <laughs> I also agree. I, yeah, gouache on toned paper. Just, oh, I love it. Sorry, catching up. Okay. Oh, Sue and Sue Ellen, I have dozens. I have probably a hundred brushes that I've bought over the years that I don't use anymore. It's sad, but I've kept them knowing that someday, like when I do these workshops, I'll have all of these brushes with me just in case someone forgets a brush or doesn't have the right brush or, you know, like I, I'll be able to share <laughs> that. But I, it took a really long time till I found the kind of brushes that work, that help me paint in the way I want to paint. It does not happen right away. I think, especially as your, your techniques develop too, like you're constantly going to be changing how you do things. I'm painting very dry with this, this, study like I usually lay in a at least one wash of color so this is interesting like why why brain what's happening in my brain right now <laughs> I think it's because every time I look at my reference photo I also look at chat to see like what's happening and it's like that there's like a weird disconnect happening. I'm still painting and I'm still kind of processing things, but it's different than usual. So I definitely feel like whatever is happening is a little subconscious. Is that possible? It must be. I mean, <laughs> it's just weird. But I made a personal goal to stream more often because I really like how casual and easy it is to just stream while also chatting with people and catching up on things. And like, I don't, I don't want to just make videos and I don't want to be seen as an expert on anything or a authority figure on anything. I want to remind people that I'm a real person and I'm working on myself and my art always and I never will ever stop. But it's tricky when you do make a lot of videos, especially in one particular topic. Like if someone else is just starting out, uh, they will most likely see if you're farther along than them in your journey, they will most likely see you as an authority figure on that thing. And, and that's like a lot of pressure. So I always try to just remind myself and others like, this is all a process, a journey that we're each in different phases of like, every one of us is hopefully doing what we love. And we've been doing it for different amounts of time. And we can learn from each other. Even if you just started like this year painting, you have something to teach someone else. I learned that a long time ago. When I first started watercolor, I was streaming on Twitch and just practicing my, myself painting like a lot. And a beginner would see it and be like, how did you do that? And so I would explain it. And it's like, I was a beginner and I was explaining it to someone who learned from that thing. And it, and it just stuck with me since then that every single person has something to teach someone else. Plus we all do things in different ways. Everyone's technique is different and you can watch 20 different artists paint the same thing and you'll probably learn something different from each person. So well, I don't know where I'm going with this tangent. <laughs> it's like, Ooh, I'm out there <laughs> and I don't even have wine. I just have water. Uh, the colors I'm using are titanium white, Naples yellow, permanent or 
primary magenta, which is basically quinacridone magenta, uh, burnt umber, cerulean blue, and cobalt turquoise, but I've barely touched that. I use it a tiny bit in the water, but then I like dulled it down a lot. So I think my idea with this was if I needed to mix a brighter green, I could mix Naples yellow with this and get like a bit more of a punchy green, but I don't want to go overboard with green in this painting because it's November and there isn't that much green left. I want to keep it very like warm. <sighs> so did I just mix color on my brush and then not use it? <laughs> Cause that was a lot of paint that just came off. Um, what's next? I want to fill in this foreground because it's like just almost ready. Let's try cobalt with Naples yellow. Ooh, that's lovely, but I don't really need it to be that green yet. I want my grasses to be green, not necessarily the what's on top or what's under it. Okay, so yeah, this is cool. I am liking the cerulean blue as a way to make a lot of neutral tones, muted tones, especially green. So if you are in the habit or if you tend to overpower or use too much green, oversaturated green, like been there, do I do that all the time this is maybe a good solution because it's impossible <laughs> to mix the green too powerful. Like this is green, just barely green. Oops, there's a thumb fingerprint there now. Uh, this is just barely green, but it'll look more green because it's near purples and reds. So you could also play with that. Um, and then if I really want to make, let's try more of a like this is basically the greenest I can go. So that's my, almost my brightest green. It's a very like turquoisey green. And now that I know that I, everything else has to be based. If I want that to be visible, I have to like work with that. So work with that limitation. Never heard you say this way is wrong or that's the way you're taught. Yeah, because I don't like that when I hear that. I've been to art school back in the day, not for painting or anything, but um, I did a lot of like drawing and sculpture and stuff. And there were some old school teachers who it's like you either did it their way or it was wrong and you're not an artist. <laughs> and that always bothered me. We had some very progressive teachers as well and that they like opened my mind to a lot of things and that was awesome. But it was just those mindsets of like, if you don't do it this way, you're not an artist. Like, ah, I just, that gets under my skin. <laughs> like, you know, watercolor purists who are like, if you use white gouache on your watercolor, you're not a watercolor artist. It's like, okay, then I'm not a watercolor artist. So like, who cares? But it's that mindset that's like elitist mindset. I don't like that. I don't like that in any aspect, not just art. Ugh, hate that. <laughs> it's such a, it's like, what's the point? Uh, what's the question? Oh, if you had a retreat, would you be, I'm the boss of you and we're going to do this? <laughs> or would you be, I'm here if you have questions, let's explore and teach each other something. I would be like, he's always the boss. <laughs> well, if he's <laughs> saying I'm always the boss, no, I would definitely be the latter. Um, I would be there to guide you, to provide options, to take you to the cool places. And then once we're at the cool place, 
you can watch my demo, you can you could be with me and learn from me, or you can wander off and do your own thing. Like, because I get it. Scotland is so beautiful and inspiring. And if you're only, if you've never been here, or maybe you will only be here once, like you'll want to take a lot of reference photos and really experience the place. And I completely 100% support that mindset. Um, but like, I don't, I, I also don't want people, if they're really wanting to watch a demo or watch something or me, for me to explain something, then like, I don't want them to miss that. So I would have to be very, from the beginning, I would have to be like giving a schedule or, or like, Hey, at this time, at this place, we're going to do this. If you don't want to watch, you don't have to watch, but that's happening. So set an alarm on your phone or something <laughs> to like walk back to this area because that's one thing I loved about going to Ian's workshop is he was this like very free mindset of you could, he was, we would go to a place, he would sit down and do his thing, but like some people would just wander away and do their own thing and then come back a la later and see what's happening. Uh, but he didn't like force anyone to do anything. And like a lot of us were there for the first, in that area for the first time and like, oh, I have to go get a quick photo of this and then come back to the demo. But like, you didn't have to like, sit there and watch every single second of it. Although I did want to, and I did usually do that. <laughs> um, it just made it, it, it like gives everyone agency and allows you to have the experience you want to have. Basically, if you, if the experience you want to have is uh, following me like a little puppy, then I will guide you my little puppies. <laughs> to the cool places. <laughs> I will give you the experience you want. Cause like you're paying to be there. You should be able to decide. Well, I can't get this gray, right? Blue. I need it to be more blue. That's two green, some red. Need some water. Maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see how this dries. That's the other thing about gouache is it like it dries differently than when it looks like when it's wet. At the puppy club. <laughs> That was a weird analogy. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but that's how I felt with Ian. I was like following him around like a little puppy, like wherever Ian goes, I'm going, I'm going to watch everything he does. But he was cool with it. Like, he's like, yeah, whatever. Do your thing. What did I even make here? Like this foreground thing is nothing. I need to fix this. I need to I want my cliff to be coming like around here and I want this to be different. All right, let's see. I could either layer on top of it, but what I'm actually going to do is scrub a little because I don't want it to be so dark there. Ah, the magic of gouache. Hey, Luthabel. Changing to a professional art account. What does that mean? Excuse me. The puppy analogy is perfect. <laughs> Good. Okay. We could also be cats. You could be little kitties following me around. That would be adorable. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to wear a little. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We're fixing this. I didn't like my shapes that were happening, so I'm changing the shapes. The reference photo is being altered in my head. <laughs> I want the beach to be a little more. He 
you love the Outer Islands. Oh, I still haven't been to the Outer Hebrides. I'm dying to go. We might go for my birthday, but it's me a big baby, especially because weather in the winter is extremely crazy and unpredictable. But yeah. Uh, most likely when I do my first few workshops will be in my current area of Maury County and like along this coast that I'm at, uh, because like, I know exactly what spots to take everyone to that is, that are going to inspire people that are going to make people really excited to paint. And because I think it's kind of like an underrated area. Everyone geeks out about the West Coast and the mountains and Glencoe and Isle of Skye. And I totally understand because those are amazing. But now that I've been here for a while and I've explored a ton of our coast, I am so in love with it. Plus in the summer, we don't get midges. So like, I mean, maybe very occasionally here and there, but it's nothing compared to the West Coast. You can be in my area in the height of summer with a t-shirt on painting outside in the sun. And you cannot do that on the West Coast. You will be eaten alive. You would be dead. Just dead. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Cronacodro magenta and, or, or magenta in general and cobalt, turquoise actually makes a really nice purple okay um okay sometimes I just need to like squint at my paper to see what's happening <laughs> I'll be like sometimes when I'm outside uh painting I'm just like s staring at everything like this like with really s squinted eyes and my paper and like my sketchbook and everything just like looking around like that. And I'm sure I look absolutely crazy and that's okay, but it really helps. It just reduces everything down to like the basics. Uh, yes, I know for the newsletter. Yeah, Tamara, exactly. It's crazy in the height of summer over there. I don't even go in the summer. Hey, Mirna, how did you learn how to start and manage your business? Mm. <laughs> oh, man, I'm laughing because I never learned and I still am learning. Huh? What? Yeah, I have just been figuring it out as I go. I literally barely even know how to do taxes, which is why I pay an accountant to do them for me. Uh, so yeah, I would not consider myself a great business person, except that I am making money and do this for a living. Like that part is obviously there. Uh, but it took me many years and it's like trial and error constantly especially because the internet the the internet it's changing so much every year i can barely keep up with how fast it's changing like don't even get me started on social media someone actually just recommended a podcast to me two people recommended this podcast to me called Oh, of course I'm blinking on the name. Ugh. I will think of it, but basically it's these uh, people kind of like internet experts who have been around since the beginning of the internet, kind of, or grew up with the internet in their life and like they've researched it and reported on it for a long time and they kind of break down why or how the internet has changed over the last few years, especially, and why it kind of sucks now and, inter and social media, especially, and how you can use the internet in a sane way. I think that's the title of the episode, uh, using the internet in a sane way or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think of it. I'll think of the name of it in a minute. 
where did I, how did I get on this topic? Mm -hmm. Oh, business. Learning how to run a business is a never changing thing that I hope to know someday. This is why I do not make videos about running a business and why I don't watch videos about that because it's, if you watch a video from last year, it's already outdated. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know ways to make money online. There's like a lot of options for that. You can make tutorials, you can sell prints, you can sell products of so many different varieties, um, like eBooks and so many things. But even my way of growing an audience since I started as an artist to what it is today for someone starting out is totally different. I think I don't even know, like, Maybe people in chat, if, if there are people in chat who are, be, are are new to this and are trying to build an audience, maybe you have some good advice for people because you're in that position right now. I mean, like, how do you navigate social media in that way? Oh my God, what am I making? <laughs> Am I going to look at this after stream and be like, what did I do? Poor Wolfie is going to be listening to me crying about what I created. <laughs> He's going to be like, because so often when I end a stream, I'm like, oh, I, it was really fun, but I painted, I did horrible painting and now everyone saw it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just when we do a study session, you just never know. I never know anyway. Let's try to fill in a bit more in the foreground. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure I get a variety of brush strokes so nothing is too uniform. Um, like I meant, like when I was talking earlier about making paintings that have like evidence of the brush stroke in them that I love that, but it's so tempting to cover up the brush strokes and blend things more. And, you know, it's, I don't know why I always do that or, or lean towards that. And I have to, how do you know when a painting is finished? You don't really, you know, when it's finished, cause you, you did it too much. <laughs> like I have to stop myself too soon in a way. If I don't stop myself before I think I'm done, I have definitely overdone it. So yeah, always towing the line between too much, I guess, and not enough. It's not horrible. I, well, no, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to like put myself down in that way. It's more like when I'm streaming, I'm very distracted and I know I can do a better painting if I was focused, but I also really think there's a lot of value in watching something come to life that isn't what I would consider right or perfect or done. Like, I think there's so much value in watching someone just play and sketch. And I love watching those videos when I watch someone just like chat and hang out and stream and paint. So I used to be like on Twitch all the time, but it's just... Yeah, it's like I, I get that mind's like, oh, I could have done so much better. Like, you know, want to represent myself in a good way. It's just a thing. It's a, a mental barrier or, or not barrier, but just a thing. <laughs> but I also think there's a, for me personally, there's a lot more of a um, value or there's a lot of value in seeing a painting that is kind of not finished or maybe created in a different mindset or created in a different way than my paintings that are like, I was really focused and I did the best I possibly could. And it's like this big finished painting. Sometimes I like leaving sketches almost like half done sketches that are just kind of a few layers in or one or two layers in, you know, you learn so much from seeing seeing your process on the paper, you know? <laughs> so any of that makes sense? 
You have to develop your business organically or you won't be able to sustain it. Yeah, that's, oh, that was another thing I was going to mention is um, wh like what you call organically kind of sh being able to pivot is way more important than knowing anything. <laughs> like if you think you know the answer to making your business successful or, you know, you have your routine down and like this is working right now, knowing when to pivot, knowing how to pivot when things change online, like the social media algorithm and like just different things, the different apps you use, like if you can't pivot and like shift thing and recover, what if tomorrow Patreon closes their doors? Like I have a way around that, but it's, it would be terrifying, but it, you have to pivot. Like you have to be ready at any time to make a change. And to me, that is the scariest and the hardest part about running a business online the unpredictability of it. Some things are more predictable than others, but still. Hey, Ashley. Brain split. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like that. Is there any sane way to use the internet by Ezra? The search engine. Yes. Thank you. That's it. Two people recommended that podcast to me, the search engine. And especially that particular episode, um, they like people DMing me on Instagram. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I don't know why all of a sudden, maybe it's a new episode. Uh, but I thought it was a really fascinating topic that I'm definitely going to go listen to. Uh, walk away every 15 minutes and yeah, I come back and see it with fresh eyes. I totally agree. Uh, it kind of helps when I'm streaming actually, because I'm always looking at chat or like not just focused only on the painting and I can see it a little bit with fresh eyes sometimes. Like just now, like I know, uh, like things pop out at me that, oh crap, <laughs> that I want to change. I want to shift or adjust and... I can approach it with, I mean, it's not like I'm walking away completely and seeing it with totally fresh eyes, but I think it does help. Also, sometimes seeing it in a screen is like, oh, you, you notice something different than you didn't see before. So if you're ever painting and you're kind of feeling stuck, take a photo of it and look at it on, at the photo. And it's like, whoa, you really, well, usually you notice something right away that you want to adjust. It's a study in a sketchbook. You can close the book. Exactly. I know. It's just, you know how like, it's just that mindset of everything online is permanent. It's like, oh, that thing is going to represent me now, but it's not like it's, at least I think unless, unless someone watches one second of this and then never looks again, then that, yeah, that does represent me <laughs> to that person. <laughs> but usually it's like the Coleman, oh, it's, it's a lot of things over lots of time that represents you online. This doesn't represent me. <laughs> so it's hard to get out of that. It's hard to remind myself of that sometimes. It's like, don't worry. It's fine. It's just a sketch. <laughs> okay, so I want light to be coming down here, which means I need a little bit of shadow on the edge of here, which I already painted over. <laughs> I want some rocks kind of coming down into the water. Oh, and I should have mentioned, so, well, I kind of did mention this, but I painted a video, <laughs> I made a video recently about this experience painting at this beach and mentioned in the video that I want to paint a larger version of what I saw 
probably more than one version. Um, so this is kind of a study for that. I want to paint a view this direction and I want to paint a view the other direction, but bigger. So what I do before that is paint lots of small studies and I try different color combinations and I try different compositions. Um, sometimes I will just jump straight into a big painting and it turns out great and I'm like, cool. But then most of the times, most of the time I have to do a lot more work, leg work before that point. Oh, I know what I was going to ask y'all. Um, because I have, I feel like sometimes I live in a bubble online and I watch the same things all the time and kind of don't hear about things outside my bubble. So I was curious if anyone wants to share the name of artists that use gouache who may or may not be on YouTube, but um, like use it in a unique way. I don't know what, what I'm even asking. I just want to follow more gouache artists <laughs> because I love seeing the variety of ways and styles it can be used in. Can be used? <laughs> English. <laughs> uh, so feel free to put those in chat. If I don't see all of them now, I'm going to rewatch the chat later because I know I always miss things in chat. So it's just something I do after my streams. I, I look through the chat. So feel free to share those names. I'm sure I'm going to recognize a lot of them because I follow a lot and Instagram and YouTube recommends them to me be based on my views. So, but I, you never know. Like I, when I used to stream a lot, every single time I streamed, someone would mention an artist's name and I'd be like, who's that? And I would look them up and it would just be like, wow, this artist is amazing. How did I not know about them before? Other than James Gurney? Yeah. <laughs> well, we all know James Gurney. Incredible. Andrew Pena. Okay. Very abstract, like awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to, to see who you guys mention. Oh man, you know, the most recent trend I've noticed on Instagram at least in my bubble, <laughs> is people are animating their paintings using some kind of app. Uh, uh, God, what is the name of it? I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. They, like uh, Lena and even Mike Hernandez, Lena Revo and Mike Hernandez are the two I saw recently, but I've seen more and more pop up. They put their painting into this app and it animates it, but it still looks like a painting. I don't know how to describe it. You just have to go follow, go look at their art on their Instagram and you'll see what I mean. It's so cool. Oh my gosh. It's mesmerizing actually. It, I guess it uses AI though, which I have, uh, I have feelings about, <laughs> but they're, it was kind of like a mind boggling thing to see for the first time. Um, I, I don't have any waves yet. I need to paint some waves. I also need to paint some. We'll do the waves last. How's that? I need, maybe I'll switch to a smaller brush. I'm, I'm like holding on using that brush for some reason. We'll try actually we'll go with a little round brush. Let's try a little round brush now. Don't know what that voice was. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I'm, re I'm recognizing a bunch of the names. Uh, da, 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 da. Found him 
to through the strata challenge oh cool oh i love that i followed that hashtag i didn't i don't think i checked on my instagram enough this year to see all the new things but um that's a fun hashtag to follow you, you see a lot of cool artists a lot of great artists there what was the other one the those so the strata challenge is the 30 day challenge right I mean, Inktober is another thing, but there was another one that a lot of artists did that used watercolor and gouache. Um, Plan April, I mean, that's another thing. Procreate iPad app. Yeah, that's a different thing, though. I Procreate is like you paint in the app and then it plays back what you made. I'm talking about a whole separate thing. Like someone, like I could put this painting into the app and it will animate the waves washing up on shore. That's what I'm talking about. It, it is so weird and cool. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> oh man, things like that make me feel old. I just sit there and stare at it. I'm like, what? Technology is crazy. Where are my flying cars, though? The Jetsons lied to me. It's 2023, for goodness sake. Where are our flying cars? Huh? Oh, apparently flying cars are pretty close to being a real a thing. <laughs> Strata is a 30 day from life. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 30 day from life. That's the, the difference, which I love. I love seeing still lifes. I love seeing plein air paintings. So that's a fun challenge to follow. Andrew's going to be in Landscape Artist of the Year. Andrew Bar Barrowman are on YouTube. Okay, I'm definitely going to check that out. That's exciting. I don't know if it if it's automated, like how they get my contact info, but I get a message from Landscape Artist of the Year every year asking me to apply. And I'm always like, no... <laughs> for various reasons, but if maybe someday if they do like a skull inversion, I said I was going to wait to do the, the, the waves, but apparently not. We're doing them now. Cause I think seeing the, the highlights will help me kind of See what shadows I want to add. How about we zoom in for that? Well, detailed action. Is that zoomed in enough? Um. Suddenly concentrating very hard. <laughs> well, the thing with waves coming up on the beach is like if you get the angle wrong, it's really annoying. Like it's so distracting. So they're coming in this way. I want to make sure I don't. These are just splashing, I think. I'm making it up as I go at this point because I've departed from my reference. So I just have to make it work. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Zoom. 
gotta love the zoom. <laughs> the close-ups. By the way, thank you for putting all the artist names in chat. I'm definitely going to check it out after. After stream today, I'm going to eat dinner. Probably wander around my neighborhood calling my cat's name till he comes home. <laughs> the usual. Okay, the one thing I am pleased about in this painting is my variety of brush strokes, I guess. Like I'm not, usually I have two, like one area that's too flat that just distracts me, that's annoying. And I'm just like, ugh, and I move on. But so far I'm doing okay. I haven't over blended anything. Maybe, we'll see. We'll see how we go by the end. I need to back up a little so I can do this side. Okay, let's see. Strategy for this foreground. I need to make the this part darker so that my lighter grasses stand out a little bit. And I'm going to use kind of a reddish, darkish brown so that the green grasses stand out more. That's the strategy. We'll see how it is. <laughs> All our neighbors think Sarah's the crazy lady. Aww. They probably do. Well, one neighbor does. Well, <laughs> remember that guy we met? <laughs> There's a guy at the end of the road. Uh... I don't know how we met him. He was like outside. Oh no. So yeah, the, the cat's tracking collar fell off behind his house and I was going to just like go root around in the, his, he has a big forest behind his house. So I was just going to go look for it. And I don't know, maybe Wolfie suggested we knock on the door and be like, Hey, we're going to, can we go behind your house and look for the collar? <laughs> so we did. And he came out and was talking to us and he was like, Oh yeah, I know. I've seen you walking around calling for your cat. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. Ringing yeah, ringing a bell. <laughs> because I used to ring a bell, which would be like their dinner time food bell. And <laughs> anyway, so I'm that lady. The thing is, like, it's a quiet neighborhood. Everything's fine. But I'm just paranoid with them being, with Floki being out at night. Like, I just want him to be home, safe, and warm. Actually, I have his tracking on my phone. I can see where he is right now. He's up the hill. Okay. He goes to this posh garden all the time. We call it the, the posh garden because it's a really beautiful menu. Um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Well, it's a mansion, yeah, but it's manus... <laughs> uh, manscaped. <laughs> what is the word where they're, like, taking care of their garden and making it beautiful and making it all look fancy? Um, wow. Manicured, yes, thank you. <laughs> I was, I was like every word except manicured manuscripted. Uh, anyways, he goes to that posh garden all the time. It's like, I get it, Floki. You have expensive taste. Our, our garden is boring and overgrown and... <laughs> So this is dark, but I'm going to put light on top of it. Um, I know it's a bit shocking at first, but if I don't have the darker stuff underneath, the foreground grasses won't stand out. 
which isn't going to work. So, cause like there's layers and layers of cliffs. There's this layer in the background. There's this mid ground layer, which is a rolling hill that rolls up to the foreground. So my way of separating this cliff that goes down like this and the foreground is to have like these overlapping grasses that kind of, yeah, you know, it might not work. We'll see. I might like in the final painting, I may have to have like much more of a separation between the two, but I was trying to like, if I do this, like a little bit more darkness there, we'll see if that helps. The sketchbook is a Stillman and Burn Nova beige. It has pretty thick paper. It's nice. Uh, I can use pretty much anything in it. Well, I don't use watercolor because I don't like watercolor on beige paper isn't ideal unless you're adding white gouache as the highlight. A private art show for the neighbors. <laughs> no, no, I've never done anything like that. I've done like a couple local things, but not in our specific town. It's, it was a little farther away. Um, maybe sometime there's, it's a pretty small town. Uh, but if I ever notice a sign or something with, for an art show, I, I would probably sign up. Why not? The problem is I think most of the planning and stuff happens on Facebook, which I don't want to use. The only reason I use Facebook now is for the Aurora <laughs> there's an Aurora watch group that posts stats and like photos of where the Aurora is happening when it's happening. So I can like find out exactly where it is, go there. Um, it's such a cool way to use the internet. I mean, it's such a, I'm so glad the internet exists so that I can use that. <laughs> Oh, speaking of Aurora, there was supposed to be a crazy Aurora last night and it never happened. It happened this more, more in like six, say five or six AM, but on the other side of the globe. <laughs> so I'm determined to see way more Auroras this winter. Country Board Walk Studios. Hey, thank you. I recognize your picture, I think. But did you have a different name? <laughs> you refuse to be assimilated. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, the local town, the townspeople. <laughs> They use Facebook to organize events and things. And I just, if I can't even, no, <laughs> I wouldn't even want to like volunteer because I know they'll be like, oh, well then you need to go on Facebook and do this and respond to this and do that. And I'm just like, that would force me to use it. And I already, oh, and I use, I also use Facebook for our local plein air painting group. That's as minimal as it gets basically. So I guess groups are the only thing I use it for now. And that's only because there's no other option, I suppose. Is there? There used to be like Yahoo groups <laughs> way back or no, what is it? Meet Meetup? Was a meetup part of Yahoo? Let's see. I'll switch to the grassy brush. 
So the one thing I'm finding that's a little annoying about using ultramarine as my main blue is, or sorry, cerulean, is that it doesn't get super dark. Wolfy, really? If I want it to go dark, I have to use like burnt umber or magenta, which changes it to a dark. And I'm like, ooh, okay. So there's no like option for a deep, deep blue like I usually do in my shadows. So it forces me to use colors differently, which is good because I'm learning, but. Paint outside the lines. Oh, I could definitely paint the grasses outside the lines or maybe make this cliff coming down here more. That could be fun. It's like, or you're talking about like this, right? Like when you paint kind of a shape in the background and then go outside the lines. It's fun to do that. What color do I have here? Hopefully now the green grasses will show up more once I do that kind of Oops, sorry. I'm out of the screen. <laughs> it would work better if I had done a taped line like the beach would be taped. The beach would be taped off. I'm nearly out of white. Uh, but I can like outline that maybe and that would stand out a little bit more. It's almost deviant. <laughs> Stay in the lines or else. I need more white. Oh yeah, Colleen, yes. Thank you. It's like, duh, the, na the picture is so familiar. I knew, I knew I knew you. <laughs> but you're changing your, your name. Sell your artwork in Walnut Ink. Oh, you're, you're not changing your name, but you're just opening up a different thing? Thanks, Becky. <laughs> this will go down in your permanent record. Ha. I don't even care. This is one of the trickier things is when you use a color that's um, a palette that is a little bit more limited, like maybe in this case, uh, Cerulean is my main blue, mixing blue. It doesn't give you like super powerful greens or, or itself, the blue itself doesn't get, it's not deep blue. So using it in the shadows is tricky. And the way I usually do, like ultramarine, I, I will just like use almost pure ultramarine in my shadow sometimes. <laughs> it's a very, a little bit of an obsession of mine, but, uh, this is, f this, this kind of thing really forces you to think differently, which is so good to do once in a while. That's why I like picking different, um, words, color palettes. Oh God, throwing the brush around. Picking different color palettes now and then. I 
just kind of fun. Like you learn, that's really the only way I can learn about color mixing is just trying different combinations all the time. So even if I have my little portable painter and I have 12 colors in here, when I go out and paint, I can force myself to only use like six colors. Um, I don't know. You could do color mixing charts as well. Hmm. Let's try, I'm going to use my bigger brush and get a little more. Shadowy underneath there. Yeah, so when I do it, when I do my final painting, I'm definitely going to use a different comp composition, I think, because I don't like how it's just kind of like, like melding into this. I have to make it more obvious that this foreground is a cliff closer to me. And this is in the valley below, you know, like in my reference, there's lots of gorse bushes right here, which are dark, deep green, which I didn't want to really include. I wanted it to be more grassy than bushy. <laughs> um, so I would have to do, yeah, I just would have to adjust the composition a little bit for it to work better, but it's close. Like I really like the colors. So I would probably use similar color palettes, What? Are you talking to me? Okay. Time plan in mind for that workshop. Need to get a visa and all that. Um, it wouldn't be till like May at the earliest. And then I might do more than one. So it could be, you know, a spring, a summer, a couple in late summer, because it's my favorite time to paint outside. Uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. But I would say like if, once I start planning them or once we start, once we choose a venue that we want to use, we would probably book it way in advance. So we can send out the notification to everyone. Cause I know that when people travel, it's like you want to have everything set up far in advance because people need to take vacation and there's a lot that goes into it. So I will give as much notice as I possibly can to people and allow people to hopefully choose from multiple dates. Change your name after the new studio from, oh, okay. Coolest discoveries you had with mixing, uh, mixing dark green when you're teal and and dark so like a burnt umber with teal um my current favorite way of making any kind of like deep shadowy green is a phthalo turquoise or a deep 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 almost so in watercolor it's called phthalo turquoise this one so deep turquoise that's mixed with any kind of burnt umber or dark brown is such a gorgeous color. It's like I use it for so much. Um, where is it? And I have it over here. No, I don't have it over there. But in my gouache palette, I'll use my burnt umber and I guess it's, what is it called? Fail. No. Primary cyan, that's primary cyan. Uh, those combined are just amazing together. 
I, I'm using those two colors quick as well. <laughs> like I need to refill my palette. What time is it? Oh my gosh. How have I been streaming for two hours already? It's nuts. Yeah, okay, so strategy for the big painting will be similar colors, altered composition, um, maybe looking at it. Actually, I'll do another couple small studies with alternatives from like here to the bottom of the painting. So I like everything from here up from the I might even try one where you can like see the bottom of this cliff down here. Could be nice. Oh yeah, I always forget about the fan brush. <laughs> fan brush is great for that. I tend to use that when I'm doing like a field. Um, or just even like a forest floor. That's good for that. much water. Okay, I'm gonna stop because I'm just keep touching it and I'm, yeah, I'm gonna mess it up if I keep going. Um, maybe really quick, I'll show you how I do like the um, even smaller thumbnail versions. So like I was just talking about how I want to adjust the composition. Uh, and there's a really quick way you can work things out in your head. Value A value study or a pencil sketch is probably the quickest. Um, yeah, you could add birds for sure. Birds, probably some people walking down there, but like on the bigger version. On the bigger version, there's way more room for detail and way more room for playing. If I add a bird right now, it'd literally be the tiniest speck ever. <laughs> um, I'm going to mute this so that I can dry this really, really quick. I don't want to make, I don't want to make your ears bleed. Oops. Hello, testing. Um, actually, I'll use a. Ooh, I forgot I had this pen over here.
Okay. I'm going to do a little thing. I think I've shown this before, but one thing that's uh, one really quick, fun way to work out. Well, I think it's fun because it's messy. like one inch by one inch or two inch. With a big brush. I mean, I could go even bigger than this. This is, yeah, let's go to the big brush. So first I do a little quick, a quick little, um, pencil sketch. And then in each one, I try something different. So maybe in this one, you can see the bottom of that cliff. I feel like I've done a thousand versions of this painting, but it's still something that I... I would want to work out and then in the foreground there's like an obvious cliff here and the waves come down also I don't know why I'm really into squares right now I could just do a long maybe a long painting would be nice actually and then in the long one you maybe there's no foreground and it's just um this beach, this expanse. So you get like those horizontal lines. I mean, you could have some, some Yes, there are metallics and gouache. Here's some. And they weirdly look matte at a certain angle and they look shiny at different angles. And in the mixed versions with white and black, you can see they're much more subtle, but you still get a little bit of that shine, especially the gold, I love the gold because when you mix it with black, it becomes like this green gold. It's so pretty. So this one, maybe the background is much smaller. sticking out a little bit farther. Or maybe this goes across the whole bottom. And then in this one, where's my reference? Okay. So This would be a very different view. Oh my God, there's so much water in my brush. No, what have I done? <laughs> Oops. How did I do that to my brush? Like, <laughs> ugh. All the skies are going to be mostly white because um, and I'll probably tint them maybe with a little pink or yellow. But these little thumbnails, this is a fun way to 
like loosen up a little bit. Whoa, that's a lot of pink. <laughs> Way too much pink. Just like a hint of warmth in the sky. I don't know. I'd probably on the bigger painting, I would definitely like mix it better than just <laughs> what I'm doing now. But if you can get yourself to like work quickly without caring about every single brush stroke and focus more on placement of color and light and composition, I think this is a really fun way of working with gouache. It definitely gets you like loosened up. So got some sky in and then I would, let's see, try a very like muted blue that might not be dark enough. That's pink or more purpley. So you could try different versions of each color and different in, in the various paintings. Well, that's really purple. That's probably the darkest one. That might work. Um, and then hmm, all of them get a little bit lighter near the shore. It's really tricky to use a giant brush when you're doing this because like it's <laughs> the almost as wide as <laughs> half of the painting is one brush stroke, <laughs> but that's the fun of it. Like you cannot sit there and, and go overboard with detail or you'll just I mean, you could probably learn to paint a very detailed painting at this scale with this brush. So it would take a long time, but it's possible. Yeah, you could maybe add iridescent medium to gouache. I mean, I don't see why not. That would be... Similar to watercolor? I'm not sure. You'd have to like really mix it to make sure it. Sorry if I'm heavy breathing into the mic. <laughs> I'm like really focused on these. I think because this, my usual strategy is to do these like a whole page of this, but quickly. So I'm making like really quick decisions and s small adjustments. Um, this is something you can do outside as well, because if you're like to take color notes, you could either do little swatches and write the colors you use or swatches plus these types of compositions. And then Making notes, though, is really helpful. That's the thing. I love at this point with my with my tray being all messy, I can just like get grays and muted versions of all the colors really easily without hardly any effort. Whereas at the beginning of the painting, I have to be like, purposefully mixing all these different grays. Uh, yes, I always find it difficult to paint outside every time. 
the light changes fast, the, it, like, even on your paper, the light might look a certain way one minute, and it looks different another minute, and yeah, it just, it's a, I'm, like, incredibly addicted to the process of it, though, and I learn so much about color and light when I do it that I'm, like, you know, that's why I always make the effort anyway, but it is very challenging. But that's why doing stuff like this can be good because it's like no pressure, just trying things out. You can just Work, work out your questions on the paper. My brush is really dry. I should just clean it out and refresh it. And I just, but I keep going. Yeah. People who paint animals from life outside are on a whole other level. Like that is just amazing to me, <laughs> especially sheep. I mean, the sheep kind of stand still, so that's okay. But <laughs> I can't imagine painting horses or like when I watch James Gurney's videos where he's painting animals from life I'm just like wow how amazing I mean he must know so much anatomy off the top of his head so he knows like he sees the thing the horse doing the thing and he can pa pa almost paint it without it staying there it's amazing mm. Okay, so after I do these little thumbnails, I'm probably going to wrap up the stream. But if anyone has any questions or thoughts you want to end the stream with, please say it. <laughs> say the thing. this one also I would be curious to know which of these does your eye lean towards I know I'm not done with them but yeah does one already jump out at you one composition this one's pretty close to what I just did except there's a gap here. Um, this one's... I mean, the colors, I definitely would lean towards the first painting I did in terms of colors, but I am playing a little bit with that right now. But I like... I kind of like this one. Going across the whole way. I like that one too. I could play more at the beach in that way. The long format or... Th oh, I forgot about the long format one. I've just been doing these little... <laughs> oh, well. shadows next to the cliffs on all of these. 
Maybe this one I could play with longer shadows. Could be fun. <laughs> Don't know. Number one, first one top left. Number two has more cut in the beach, makes more definition. First or second. Yeah. I mean, this one is kind of too close to the initial one that I did. So I'm like, eh, you know, it's kind of played out in my head, but I like these more. I would definitely have a lot more fun in the, the color of the water. Like I would, I would kind of do that, but with these compositions, <laughs> um, hello, Jeff. Uh, yeah, this will be on replay. And I think I figured it out so that the live chat will be on replay as well. For some reason, the last stream didn't save that, which was really annoying. <laughs> so. Oh. Okay. I am suddenly really hungry. And what I like to do is leave something unfinished in my sketchbook for tomorrow because it gets me really excited to pick up my paintbrush the next day. So I'm going to leave this one ready for myself tomorrow to play with. Um, but yeah, this is the general idea where if you're like, oh, I don't really know what composition or even color scheme you want to do really quick. I don't know how long that took me, but not that long. It's if you work kind of quick and just make those quick decisions, I feel like, well, for me anyway, a lot of times the answer is revealed. <laughs> I'm like, it's just a way of quickly working through different ideas without wasting too much time. Not that it's a waste, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's never a waste. zoom in on those. It's also kind of fun to see how much variety you can create in such a small space. Especially with a big brush. You like number one? So this composition, so, uh, okay. So like a bright beach here, a bit there, in the open so you play with the water shapes so not all the way across I kind of like I like the beach here for sure so I think that would be that's a strong contender I think I'll dig I'll probably really like this one as well um but maybe I'll post I'll post all that on Instagram at some point <laughs> uh, I'm very behind on Instagram All right, hope y'all had fun. It's the first one we did. D. One of the best things is seeing it, seeing the texture up close. I think I l my that's my favorite thing about gouache. When you look at it up close. Just dry brush, dry brush, texture. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out. I think I'm going to go have dinner, just hang out, wait for Floki to come home. Don't forget to wash your brushes and clean them or put them away so they don't break, so they don't 
fall apart in your water overnight. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hitting everything. And now I can put the lid on. And now I can save that paint and it'll be usable tomorrow so I can keep going with that color palette and, and finish the other beach scene. So thank you all for hanging out with me. Just last reminder that my gouache boxes, the pre-order ends Wednesday the 15th. So if you want to check that out, there's tons of video. I've, I've posted a few videos about it already, um, but basically like all my new brushes will be available in those as well as all of the gouache that I'm using, the Shinhan gouache, and a tutorial. So you get a lot of stuff every single month and I'm very excited. And then let's see the next stream. I don't know when I'm going to stream again, but I like doing these little study streams. So as the winter approaches and I'm inside a lot more often, uh, we'll probably be, I'll probably be streaming more often. I hope you had fun and zoomed I'm zoomed in. What? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Wolfie's saying something. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out with me. I am going to throw up my end screen and Yes, I will go back through chat and check out all those artist names you mentioned to me and make sure I didn't miss anything. But if you have any questions or just want to comment something, you can comment on this video once it's done and you can watch it again if you want. But <laughs> I will see you all soon for another video, I guess. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye, screen.